Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except next week. We will not be live. Uh, we may or may not actually have a pre recorded show. I don't know, and I will not know until sometime next week. So um, we may or may not have a news. If we do a news, I will premiere the non Linux news portion at the same time, 8 o'clock. And then I will premiere the um, the uh, Linux one on uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock. That's what I will do if I end up pre-recording. So uh, if you do uh, you like to catch the show live, just be aware, next week we will not have the show live. And let's go ahead and jump on in. Uh, first up, Peppermint Loaded, a fully packed edition for new users. Uh, so they say this is a fully loaded. Um, uh, Salbu mentioned, though, that that word actually means something slightly nefarious. So Peppermint guys might want to reconsider that. It has to do with uh, packaging, like pirating software stuff in there. I don't know if that's completely true or not. It's just something that he had brought up. So it might be worth looking at. But effectively, what it means is that there is now a Peppermint build that has just a ton of software built in it. And then they also have super light versions. They have a Debian version. They have a DevOne version. And so there's a lot of options. Uh, guys, uh, was it today or yesterday? I think it was today on the Matrix server. We're talking about uh, trying out Peppermint. They said it was extremely solid and sound. And so uh, that was uh, that was good to see. So uh, let me see where the releases are. So here are all of the releases for Peppermint OS. So we have the Debian base, which is System D. We have a Dev1 base, which is Sys V. So that's how the system starts. We have a 64, 32-bit, and an ARM version. So for anybody running an ARM chip, we have the fully loaded, which is fully populated XFCE for novice users. Simple and powerful, fast, essential pre-installed applications, or customize it for your needs. Available in 12 and 24-bit. No arm on that one. We do have a Mini, which uh, I was told the Mini is like the Debian Net installer where you just download it. It's a quick, easy download. And then you choose what you install while you are setting the system up. And then we do have a GNOME Flashback uh, 32 and 64-bit in the Debian base or the Dev1 base. So Pepperin is coming along with uh, making some some uh, good distros and things like that. I was wondering if they were doing a little too much, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I need to jump in here, download a few, and see what uh, see what I think. All right, next up, Solace begins the removal of Snap packages. So we did address this a while back that Solace has said there's just way too many issues keeping up to date on snaps that it is frustrating to them to have to do, uh, uh, give up so many of their resources just to handle the uh, the snap patches and, and things like that. So uh, what they are doing now is uh, they first are getting rid of app armor, which means that your snaps are not running in full container isolation. They will be in partial container isolation, uh, what they call partial refinement. You will get a warning running those, but you can actually hide the warning by doing a pseudo snap hide confinement warning. And this is the precursor to them actually removing snaps entirely from the system. So there is what uh, Solace is up to. Of course, Solace is a really good distribution. Uh, they are the ones who have created the Budgie desktop, and they are a Linux built from scratch. Downsides, of course, it doesn't have as much curated packages because it doesn't support a lot of the packaging that you would find in some of the other builds. But there is certainly enough software in there to make it a full functioning system. They also have released a guide to help you transition from snaps over to flat packs. Now, I remember actually when snap first came to, um, to Solace. And if you go back and find that uh, probably cringy video because of how old it is, then uh, what you would, uh, what I said in there is it was actually good that they installed the snaps because it gave you access to a lot of packages that were not otherwise available. So there is what uh, what they are up to. So uh, with that, though, uh, we're going to jump on over to our last article, and that is the imperfect Linux-powered DIY smart TV is the embodiment of ad fatigue. So this is a Linux geek who has decided to uh, take a computer, disassemble it a little bit, 
run a custom version of Debian with Sway, and then he's effectively running a full screen Firefox implementation, which allows him to go into all of these individual apps. So he has this offline media. He has a watch list. He's got, uh, is that HBO Max, uh, Netflix, YouTube, <clears throat> just a few other options in there as well. And so what he did, he said, my solution is not specifically elegant, uh, but it's just what he had floating around. So you can see that he, he took the computer and uh, he pretty much pulled a few pieces out of the bottom and then he strung the thing up on the back of the TV. He added a few modifications so that uh, it allowed him to turn on the TV and the computer with a uh, simple power on via HDMI. Uh, and he said you could have done that without having the special module, but the laptop he was using did not support that. So he used a separate module in order to turn that on. So now he has one simple solution. It's not the fix for everybody, but he said it works for him. There's no ads on it, and everything that he does in here is just absolutely what he needs. So uh, there you have it. Uh, the um, the the options are limited, uh, limitless there. Now, of course, if you're looking to do something like this, what I'd probably recommend is build something like a Libra Elec on a Raspberry Pi. It's a little bit more limited than what he does here, but it is certainly something that, um, uh, that you can do a lot easier without having to worry about a lot of other factors. Well, uh, with that, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a, um, supporter networks. So today we are highlighting locals, switch to linux.locals.com. Com. And so, of course, uh, over there we have our short story series, which will be resuming, I believe, September. We're going to resume those, and we will actually have the uh, full collected book out there soon. Uh, pretty much after I come back from camp, we're going to start working on that in more detail. So there is our Linux news for the day.